and Ferdinand the Garbage Sacker. Now for thousands of years, or even a hundred thousand years, people have been using herbs, whether that is through cooking, aromatics, or even medicinal purposes. They, we just know that we've been using herbs for a long time. Now you too can use herbs, well, collect them in herbaceous. This is a new game from Pencil First Games from a trio of designers. So let's go ahead and take a closer look and see what do I think. In Herbaceous, players are making the best collection of herbs. There are different ways to make an herb collection, but in this push your luck set collection game, it's first come, first herb. All players start with four empty containers in which they will place a set of herbs to score points. Each one is specific on what herbs can be potted in it. On a player's turn, they draw a card and decide whether to keep it by putting it into their private garden or in the middle of the community garden. After placing that card, they draw another and have to place it on the other area. So if a card is placed into a player's private garden first, they must send the second card into the community garden. Once on the turn, players may score the container cards before drawing cards. When scoring, they may take cards from a combination of both the community and their own private garden to make a set. From either garden, they can take as much as they need to score the most points. For the container cards, players score cards in different ways. For one, players need to make a set of the same herb, another based on different herbs, and this one needs different pairs of herbs. This last container is for special herbs. Out of the regular herbs, there are only three cards each of the mint, chives, and thyme. These have a value listed on them and will score that many points at the end of the game it plays in this container. As a bonus, the biscuit card is worth an extra 5 points to the first player who has all three herbs in it. The game will end when either all the players have potted their containers or when everyone can no longer pot herbs even after the deck has been depleted. Depending on the number of cards they pot into the containers, the player will earn that many points. The player with the most points wins the game. Alright, let's go ahead and start with the presentation of the game. Uh, let's talk about the art. So the art is astounding. I really like the art, the um, the art of the cards. They are kind of like this watercolor kind of style in there. It makes you relax when you're playing with it. I mean, these really soft kind of things and the, the colors really flow through and they're very vibrant. Uh, the other thing, uh, you, you also get these uh, little garden tabs. I don't know what they exactly call it, like garden tabs or something like that. I mean, this looks like you would put something in a pot in the garden and that's really cool uh, to, to kind of like donate what kind of player has which color in there. So that's a little nice added touch to the theme for it. All right, moving on to gameplay. I mean, it's a very simple and elegant game. Uh, there is not a lot of rules to it, but the choice, you have a good amount of choice of you have. I mean, you have, you can either pot a plant, a uh, container, or you can go ahead and just draw the cards and hopefully you can put it on the right spot you need to. So not a lot of rules in there, but it's something easily to get everyone can understand what kind of pots you need. And hopefully you can like understand like, do I take, do I do, do I do this right now? Do I take herbs or not by far my favorite part of the game is this push a luck aspect in it i mean it's like oh i'm gonna pull should i pull now or should i pot that's really what it is so if you pot that means you get the points for it but if you wait to draw cards you might draw cards for someone else's on turn and you might not get anything else to it so it's really that risk you're taking like oh, i'm gonna let it go one more turn or and so i can score bigger it's like, oh, but it's only three of the same cards that I need. I need more. <laughs> so it's like, oh, I need more. You you get really greedy in the game at first and trying to just see like, oh, one more turn. Maybe I'll score better. Uh, the game also supports team mode and solo mode. And in team mode, it's a little different. You draw three cards and then you also have a teammate's garden. So you draw three cards, put it on one, either the middle, your own garden, and then a shared teammate's garden. So that's really cool. And in solo mode, you draw three cards again, but this kind is a discard in there. So I'm glad that they do support these kind of player modes in there. Now let's go ahead and move to some negative parts of the game. First of all, uh, the ending. The ending I do not like as much. I mean, most of the the, the best part of the game is played during the middle where uh, everything is trying to, you're growing herbs that way, you're putting cards down. Uh, no, but the ending is, it kind of loses steam after a while because, uh, Basically, what happens is people just scoring as much as they can. So it's like, oh, one pair or, oh, a, a card. <laughs> so unfortunately, it does uh, lose a little steam at the end. But so really, you're looking to at least hopefully score as much as you can before the deck kind of like fizzles out. 
Uh, another thing is the special herbs. I mean, I do like the concept that they can score on their own and bring points. Uh, specifically, I'm thinking about the biscuit card that is used for an extra scoring. Now, uh, when special cards come out, it's a little annoying because um, as long as uh, the way we play it is like if you get a special card, it's like, ooh, take it. You're going to take that card because no one else can use it. It's really a thing in there. And it's so hard to get the biscuit cards anyway. It's going to be rare. And if it does happen, it's going to be mostly because it's going to be out of luck. Now, the last thing I do like to talk about is perhaps the player count. Now, this game only goes up to four players. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of great games that do play with four players, a lot of card games that do play with four players. This is the game I just wish can support just a bit more. I mean, just the system itself, it seems that it can just support more. But unfortunately, there isn't that support in there. And that it's like either play three or four players in there. But I'll... <laughs> oh well, but I don't know, it can be designed that way, but it's this is it's just a feeling for me that I just wish I can bring more people and play more people at the table with this game. Now keeping on the subject of player accounts, I think I like three players the most. I mean it goes all the way to four. I do love playing with four players. I think three works just a little better. Um uh, the reason that it, the reason for that is because you're playing with less cards in there. So you're taking a couple of random cards out and it's kinda like, oh, some of the cards have a bit of an edge, and I do love that edge in, in some of these kind of like push your luck games. Like another game will be like, no thanks, what to do? Take out some cards in there, so you can't exactly have perfect information. In the game of a four player game, you do have perfect information in there. Every card's going to come out. Three players, not every card may not come out. So it's like, I'll just love, I'll just really like that edge in that three player game. I would suggest just go for it. Don't wait. Just take the cards that you think is going to score as much as you can. Um, They're ready. So if you're really... Pu I mean, most of the people I play were pushing to get like seven of a kind. Um, Don't do that. That's very rare. And everyone's going to just... If everyone's good players, that's not going to happen at all. So I would advise you when you're playing the game, just take what you what you can get right now. So if it's like something like four pairs or even like uh, five of a kind. Five of a kind is pretty good. But four of a kind, yes, take that. Five of a kind, here, you're off to really a good start. So having said all that, I am very, very impressed with Herbaceous. I mean, this is by far one of my favorite games of this year. And this is a game that I probably will keep in my collection forever. So great, wonderful game. Something I would recommend to everyone. So go ahead and check it out. I am giving it my highest rating, a superior, which means it is a super stacker. My first super stacker. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to give this video a like and subscribe to my channel for more videos on boarding card games. This is the Cardboard Stacker and remember to keep on stacking games.